I am the father of two beautiful daughters and Madison. For over 10 years, I've been fighting to be in their lives. I have filed modifications, violations, done everything I could. But every time I am in court, I'm treated like a criminal. I am ganged up on by the judges, GALs, lawyers, even my own lawyer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Since day one, my ex has been making false allegations of abuse, when in reality she was mentally abusive, which is what ended our marriage. I tried counseling for the psychologist who tried, uh, who tried telling her how she was mentally abusing me, but it, my ex stormed out saying she didn't know what he was talking about. I currently see my kids, like many of you, every other weekend for about an hour. I used to call on the phone too, but they were always being monitored, so they wouldn't talk. They would only just say yes or no. My ex has also gone so far as telling my youngest to come up to me and hit me and to throw herself on the ground and yell, Daddy, push me down. My ex's father, a retired police chief and former member of the Endicott Police Union, is friends with one of my judges because we don't have any collusion, do we? I've tried repeatedly to remove him from my case because of conflict of interest that were repeatedly denied. I've been paying daycare every month since my kids were born, and if I don't pay, I'm threatened with jail time. Mm -hmm. My ex-wife is a school teacher, and with Summers, uh, I've still been required to pay daycare despite that I uh, take care of my children. My ex has also uh, uh, bought braces that cost me over $6,000 without even asking if he could afford it. His share is 3000 and he's fallen behind. The judge has said that he's responsible for paying his, for his, his ex's legal fees. Oftentimes we know those are then inflated when we're ordered to pay those. Right. Yep. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I don't know the exact definition of racketeering, but I think it's pretty close to that. <laughs> to give you an idea of how I can afford this or not, I currently earn $26 per hour. My child support is $320 a week with an additional $160 a week taken out for back medical and daycare. I'm responsible for half of all medical and must pay $100 a month in daycare. So as you can see, I don't have much to live on. And exactly what this man and what these moms have told me over and over again. What the American people doesn't know is that as the state enforces the child support orders, they receive federal funding through Title IV D and E of the Social Security Act. Yeah. Right. These states have a monetary to take us as parents and reduce us down to visitors. That's right. The court system also has an incentive to cause as much conflict as humanly possible between moms and dads. Right. Yes. They, make more money. they drive conflict, they drive up profits. Yeah. Right. They keep their jobs. We are not one another's enemy. This is not moms versus dads. This isn't about child support. It is about a constitutional and God-given right to be a parent. That's all we want. That's all that we want. Nothing more. To be in the lives of our children, to read them their bedtime stories, to give them hugs, to make memories without being exploited by our own government. Yep. They need to know and understand that they will no longer exploit us. That's right. They will no longer extort you for all that you're worth. Right. They will no longer put us in debtor's prisons that were outlawed over 100 years ago. So on September the 26th, I also draw another line in the sand. Yep. My child support is me being a father. That's right. Yeah. Your job as a mother, your child support, is being a mother to that child. Yeah. It is our job as to instill our morals and our values. It is not the court system's job to tell us what is appropriate for our children or what is appropriate. We are presumed to be fit parents minus a fitness hearing finding us to be unfit. That's right. yeah. I don't know about you, but nobody's ever found me to be unfit. That's right. Me neither. By a jury. By anybody. Why don't we have a jury of our peers? Why don't we? Why don't we? Why, Why is that so hard to implement? Yeah. 
Family law by <laughs> jury. That's right. Family law ought to be by jury. By jury. Fight right. some corrupt. We shouldn't even have a family court system. That's right. We don't even need the damn thing. Right. right. You want to tell me how there's other systems around the world that operate just fine without a family court system? That's right. right. Yeah. If mom and dad split ways, all they do is they just go their separate ways. They yeah. use somebody to assess uh, the financial belongings to them. They split it down the middle. Yeah. They go their separate ways. They have 50-50 equal custody. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. And we don't need, we don't even need the judges. We don't even need the lawyers. We don't, we don't need any of that. No. Very rarely should this ever go into a family court. That's right. We don't need it. No. No, it's because they want to make us criminals. That's right. Yeah, they do want to make you to be a criminal. That's right. It's all for the money. And you know, and that's partly why I started doing what I'm doing. Because I looked into the future, and what I saw for myself wasn't pleasant. What I saw in myself was a guarantee. That's right. When they set my child support order exceeding $2,500 a month, mm -hmm. as a middle-class American, mm -hmm. who also has to provide for his own family, his own household. That's right, man. I knew there's no way I can sustain this. No way. Which began my research into how the system was designed. Where's all my veterans at out there? Where you at? Oh, where's my veterans at? Where you at? I want all my veterans up here beside me right now. Get up there. Get my vets up there right now. Let me tell you about what they're doing to my brothers and sisters. I'm going to talk. Come on, give them a round of applause. Get it going. Get it going. Get it going. Get it going. Let me tell you what they do to us. Let me tell you what they do. In my research, you guys on your smartphones, you can find this right now, what I'm getting ready to tell you. You go on to the federal website for the Office of Child Support Enforcement. You go on there right now. And on there, there's a link for military. And underneath that link, there's a survey that was conducted from 2008 to 2010. Inside that survey, it details and outlines the research that was conducted when they surveyed 14,000 of my homeless brothers and sisters. 14,000 homeless veterans. And what they found, they took and they assessed 42, 42 specific items of the top unmet needs of homeless veterans. Just like the man that I saw down here in North Carolina sitting on the street corner. Just like the, the father that I saw over in Indianapolis right next to all of the Colts, the Indianapolis Colts crap. Well, I got a homeless veteran sitting on the street begging. And they tried to silence me out down there in Indy. Let me tell you that. Indianapolis tried to silence me out by turning their music off. The Colts did. Oh. I got, I got beef with the Colts right now. <laughs> but let me tell you this what they found in these I'm sorry I get on a tangent what they found in these veterans top unmet needs they revolve around exactly what was happening to me because when I can't pay that child support order the state was going to impose sanctions on me they're going to suspend my driver's license they're going to put bad marks on my credit they're going to make it more difficult for me to get a place. Right. And ultimately, what I, what, I, what I was facing was incarceration. Right. So upon my retirement of 31 August 2016 from the United States Navy, what I currently face right now is the very real and possible look that a few months from now, I won't be able to have this conversation with you because my country is going to call me a criminal. They're going to call me a deadbeat father, and they're going to lock me up. Not only can I not pay that, today I'm telling you, I will not pay that. They will no longer extort me. All of those veterans' unmet needs revolve around this. When they impose those sanctions, and they put you in jail, you're going to come out of prison with a misdemeanor or felony on your record. That's right. Then what, it, what, it, what is your ability you to get, a, get real and meaningful work now? No, you can't. You've got a misdemeanor or felony on your record. How are you going to get gainful employment now? That's right. Now you can't get gainful employment, so about your best prospect is a minimum wage job. And in the state of Illinois, they're going to garnish half of that. 
they're going to garnish 50%. So in Illinois, minimum wage, I believe, $9 an hour. So now, as a father, coming out of prison, I have to look and realize my future is I'm going to have served my country. They're going to suspend my driver's license and limit my ability to provide for myself and my children. I'm going to be incarcerated. My child support will continue to accrue because they call it voluntary unemployment. They put me into a for-profit prison system that required no, no due process. It required no jury. It required no right to an attorney. I'm going to serve my time. I'm going to get out. I'm going to make $9 an hour working at McDonald's. The state's going to take half of that. So I'm going to live on $4.50 an hour, and I have to make a choice. I have to make a choice. Do I abandon my children and go underground? Do I live a life of crime? Do I sell drugs? Do I rob? What do they push me to to try and live as a human being with basic